Well, this is totally not Danzig, and you're listening to the Shred Shack. Greetings, folks. I'm Dan Mack. And this is Chris Mack. Welcoming you to episode 114 of the Shred Shack Podcast, your premier source of news and uninformed yet heavily biased opinions pertaining to all things heavy metal, airing weekly, bi-weekly, sorry, on iTunes, Mixcloud, and Google Play, as well as on YouTube at youtube.com slash the Shred Shack and youtube.com slash Adamant's Templum. Let's get started with some old business. Uh, my old business button. Old business is old business, and new business is new business. We actually have no old business for a change. Oot. Let's talk about new business. And this is new business, and we do not discuss new business until next quarter. And with new business, we start talking about new album releases, of which I have none. That's typical at this rate. Yes. I have one. And when? what is that one? That would be The Great War by the Mighty Sabaton. Mm-hmm. And it is quite awesome mm-hmm. uh, for anybody who doesn't know who Sabaton is. They do. They are very much. Uh, I would say a concept band in general. You know, most of their, I think, a good portion of their catalog revolves around telling stories of war. And these are true stories. They're not like you know writing. Yeah, you know, making things up here. If, if, if you go to the Wikipedia page and go to their albums, they tell you what each song is about. Yes, and it's they, actually wonderful. It's very specific. And it's also in the liner notes. Yeah. And I think they also have their own kind of history channel where it's the Sabaton History Channel where they, they, they do this sort of thing. Mm. And, you know, very educational stuff. <laughs> as awesome as that is. Yeah. And uh, But musically, it's fantastic. You know, I I was I, when I first listened to it. I'm just kind of getting into Sabaton Sabaton now, and it's kind of late because it's like their ninth album. They've been around for like 20 years, or something like that. Yeah. But um, I always thought that Sabaton was more about the choruses than anything else. Like, I mean, they have these big bombastic choruses that are catchy as fuck, big sing along things. Like, I never associated them with like you know really. Um, like I never just thought about them as like a riff band. Like they don't have any memorable riffs that you can sing to yourself. But the more I listen to them, the, the more I appreciate their music. Not just the choruses, but the actual music behind it. Yeah, it's um, you know, really good stuff. I love it. I think it's awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, some of it might sound cheesy to some people on the outside, but it's fantastic stuff. I highly, highly, highly recommend the record as a whole. All right. So what else have we, have we been listening to? Still working on the Pat Gessner box of fun from a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, still finding a, a gem here or there for that. Um, randomly just threw in Gojira's Magma into my car yesterday just because I was thinking about that album. I don't know why, but it's still fucking great. And just getting back from vacation, so I only have like a handful of albums of the day on our Instagram page. Of course, Sabaton the Great War, um, a band. A groove metal band. I think they're from Austria. They are um, the band's called Streambleed, and their newest record that came out this year, "Enslaved the World Forever." They happen to uh, reach out to me via our Instagram page, and they have a new single out, which I have to listen to. Um, so I have to check that out. They're pretty cool. And last but not least, um, a band called Sad Iron. They've been around for a long time. Uh, but they just released a new album this year, uh, old school thrash, uh, speed metal sound. The album is called Chapter Two: The Deal, and it's actually really fucking good. So I highly recommend people checking that one out too. Right on. I have been listening to the radio and uh, Psychotic Waltz into the Everflow. Um, I keep forgetting to bring my iPod into the car. So. <laughs> So there's 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 that, but um, but the radio has always been a, a good listen lately. Um, that's because there's three main stations that I listen to, and, and the playlist overall has been some of what I expect. Um, because it's it's Kiss FM, it's mm-hmm. uh, it's the Eagle, um, and Jack FM. Um, 
but I'm usually never disappointed when I'm when I'm flipping through channels, and unless like I I hit that 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 sad zone where everybody's on on commercials and I'm like oh, oh man that's tough yeah I hate that like somebody play a song <laughs> please play some music um I think um I can't remember if. It was before you left or not, but I actually watched um, Queen live in Ukraine. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, it was Queen and Paul Rogers live in Ukraine. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, and that was really good. Um, it was one I hadn't really paid attention to. Um, I've, I've watched Return of the Champions. I hadn't, I hadn't watched much of uh, live in Ukraine. Um, but... Um, that was a great collaboration while it lasted. I remember when we saw it at Madison Square Garden. It was yes. fantastic. Yes. Um, and this reflects more of... Um, reflects a little bit more of the bad company side or the free side. Um, like when we saw them, they played bad company. Mm -hmm. um, All right because, now. Because they, they didn't really do that during... When they did Return of the Champions, they added a little bit more of that... Uh, for live in Ukraine, and, and they added um, um, the more studio version of "Say It's Not True" and um, "Celebrity" from oh, right, right, from, right, right. Cos from Cosmos Rocks. Um, so it's it was a, it was a good show for sure. Um, anything anything that Queen releases as far as live goes has been good. Um, they're live at the Rainbow DVD, uh, Blu-ray, whatever you want to call it. Um, friggin' amazing from like 1974. Mm -hmm. It's friggin' amazing. Um, but I watched that recently. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much been it. Sweet. I've been, I've been playing, I've been playing, uh, Lego Incredibles lately, so. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. yeah that's been, really cool. It's been a lot of fun. So, uh, that's, that's been a lot of my time. Um, so let's go on to our normal sections. Uh, we have no obituaries. We have no cancer to report. So, uh, I don't have the everything is awesome clip, but. but everything uh, is awesome right but, now. But right now. All as well, so. Although, we don't have any metal obituaries, uh, however, uh, Rucker Hauer, Hauer? R Rucker Hauer. Rucker Hauer, he passed away yes. recently. Uh, for fans of Arion, he was a narrator on Lost in Space. And if uh, he... He lost, lost in the New Real. That's the one. Lost in Space is that TV show, right? Yeah. Yeah, my bad. Lost in the New Real. Lost in the New Real. And, of course, he was one of the replicants in Blade Runner. Yes. So... Unfortunately, he passed away. He was yeah. 75 years old. He also, I'm pretty sure he was also a hobo with a shotgun. Yes, and he was also one of the executives in Batman Begins. Yes. And he's also a literally a fairy godfather in True Blood on HBO way okay. back when. Well then. He's been around. Yes. Well, he, he passed away recently, unfortunately. So uh, everything is not necessarily awesome. <laughs> But in metal, it's awesome. Yeah. I guess. Unfor um, unfortunately, the, uh, this is one of the, death is one of those things that happens in threes. So you gotta worry about who's next. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm worried to, to find but out. But we all know one thing is for sure: it won't be Ozzy or Keith Richards. <laughs> Either one of those, they will never die. <sighs> Are so you ready for some general let's news? Let's go on to some general news. All right. Benediction have been rejoined by vocalist Dave Ingram, and he is formerly of a Bolt Thrower. Ingram's return to Benediction comes two months after the departure of the band's previous singer, Dave Hunt. Uh, it says that Dave's hunt schedule had become increasingly congested with his commitments to both Benediction and Anal Nathrak, as well as his relentless studies uh, for his Ph.D. Therefore, Dave decided to vacate the role in Benediction he has commanded for over 20 years. Uh, yeah, if you're going for your PhD, I think that's kind of important. Well, just a little bit. I wish I'd mentioned what his PhD is going to be in. Like, I'd have to do a little bit of research into that one, but yeah. I was just, I'm just curious. Yeah. 
All right, so you're going to feel a little bit of a spinal tap feel in the general news today, and you'll get why towards the end. But first off here, Lamb of God have officially parted ways with the drummer Chris Adler. His replacement is Art Cruz, who had previously played with Prong and Winds of Plague and filled in for Adler on several Lamb of God tours in the past year. And it's a damn shame because Chris Adler is a great drummer. Yeah, well, he's, he's, he's been busy. He has been busy. Apparently, uh, one of the reasons he stepped away from Lamb of God was he was um, working on physical and occupational therapy after a motorcycle accident. And, of course, he's also a manager for several bands. He has a management company. He's taking care of uh, the business side of things. So he might be a little bit preoccupied with that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Filters founding members Richard Patrick and Brian Lissigang, Lissigang, uh have scrapped plans to make a new album together. Last fall, it was announced that Patrick and the guy, I can't pronounce his last name, were rejoining forces to create a new record. A pledge music campaign was launched, and the project was given a tentative title, Rebus, as a nod to Filters' 1995 debut, Short Bus. Patrick took to Filters' Facebook page to share a trailer for the upcoming 20th anniversary of filters title of record and in the accompanying message he wrote rebus is no bus due to the pledge music debacle there will be no rebus record featuring brian instead we are celebrating the 20th anniversary of title of record director fan music platform pledge music recently came under fire for missing thousands of dollars in payments to artists and now appears headed for bankruptcy Ugh. yeah yeah we, we, we've, we've been talking about that for a while yeah we've talked about that so that is unfortunate. Yeah. Another unfortunate item here, but definitely, you know, going with doctor's orders. Dave Mustaine canceled his appearance at this year's edition of the San Diego Comic Con International. He was scheduled to sign copies of the band's graphic novel, Death by Design, at the Heavy Metal Magazine booth number 1529 on Sunday, July 21st, between 2 and 4 p.m. Megadeth released the following statement. San Diego Comic Con International fans, we have some good and bad news. By doctor's orders, we need to cancel Dave Mustaine's appearance at Heavy Metal Magazine's booth, but Megadeth always covers its fans. An exclusive 12x12 print will be given to buyers of the deluxe edition of Megadeth Death by Design, signed by Dave Mustaine, uh, Kiko, David, Ellefson, and Kirk, uh, Dirk. So pretty much signed by the band. Yeah. So, you know, a little bit of a... Of a one off there, I guess. Yeah, Good thing. it's kind of kind of a consolation. Yeah, prize. that's I think that's the word I was looking for. Yeah, consolation prize. All right, number two in our Spinal Tap theme here, Nightwish drummer Juka. I'm going to just stop there. Yeah. Who stepped away from the band's touring and re- uh, recording activities five years ago has confirmed his permanent exit from the group. His replacement will be Kai Hato, who has been playing with Nightwish since the summer of 2014. Wow. Now the thing about this guy, thing is, is that Juka is also um, very much in charge. I don't know what to say in charge, but he's very much involved in the business side. So he might be the manager of the band, mm-hmm. and he's still maintaining that role in the band. He's just not playing with them anymore. Gotcha. Kind of like um, Angela in uh, Arch Enemy. Yeah. All right. Here's a pretty awesome thing. Devin Townsend has confirmed that the set list for his 2020 tour will include material from Strapping Young Lad which, of course, is the seminal industrial metal outfit he fronted until 2007. Since the band disillusion, Townsend has been asked repeatedly whether he would reform strapping, only to cite the mental and physical toll the group took on him, in addition to his desire to, for new musical pursuits. I think that would be very cool, because I think further on in the article, it, it read that um, this next tour in 2020 is going to be a very mesh of all of the stuff he's ever done hmm. so it's going to be a little bit of everything just do an evening with he usually does i think most of his i think most of his tours typically are evening withs mm-hmm. i mean that's why like you get to something like the retinal circus or what he did at the royal albert hall you know these big extravagant productions mm-hmm. so we will see what his plan is for the 2020 tour right on. Betraying the Martyrs has been forced to cancel the rest of their North American Summer Rapture Tour, including July 11th show in Orangevale, California, after being involved in a serious auto incident following the band's show in Los Angeles. All crew and band members are safe, 
but the incident happened around 4 a.m. when the trailer portion of the band's Mercedes Sprinter van caught fire. Shit. All band and crew members were able to safely to exit the vehicle with no major injuries. Tragically, all the band's equipment was lost in the blaze. Damn. Now, there was a little bit of a, a epilogue to this one. Is that one? This uh, blah, blah, blah. betraying the Mars is one of the bands that Chris Adler manages, and he happened to lend them a drum set that got destroyed in this fire. And the drum set was the one that he used to record his parts on Megadeth's Dystopia. Unfortunately. Damn. Yeah. And last but not least here, wrapping up our Spinal Tap drummer's situation here. High on fire, half part ways with founding drummer Des Kenzel. No replacement? No, announced. nothing was reported yet. Um, as they have a tour coming up, they will probably short announce a replacement shortly. Hmm. So, drummer's not having a very good two weeks here on the Shred Shack. No, not really. Uh, so nothing for the crime blotter, so thankfully... Yeah, so no one's getting, uh, no one's breaking the law, and no one's having stuff done to them, so it's nice. Oh. That, that we know of. Yeah, true. Uh, yeah. Alright. You ready for some Metallica breaking shit? Yeah. Well, Metallica's concert Tuesday night, July 16th, in the southern Finnish city of Hemelina. I'm gonna stick with that. Uh, was attended by 55,000 people, about 1% of the country's total population. Ahead of the sold-out gig, the band donated 55,000 euros to the Finnish children's charity Hope Rai, I guess, which is one euro for every member of the audience. Now, there's a there, there was a report that I did not put in the script here. Apparently, a representative of Metallica admitted to um, reselling tickets online for like scalpers' prices. Yeah. So, uh, Metallica came under fire for that recently. I haven't seen much about it since that initial report, though. So, mm. there's uh there's a bit by uh, John Panette, the uh, comedian, and he's talking about uh, performing in in an island just like outside of Canada. And like it's a very small island, small population, and everything. And he says, he says like a thousand people showed up, and I was like, wow, this is like everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you can actually put a percentage of the population of your of your country at a show, that's that's pretty incredible. You know, like fifty five thousand people. That's like you know, a building in Manhattan. Yeah, <laughs> like a building. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, are you ready for your favorite section here? Oh, yeah. F -f -f Feuding. Joey DeMeo says that Manowar has filed a lawsuit against the Hellfest organizers over the cancellation of the band's concert at this year's edition of the French Heavy Metal Festival. For those of you who have not listened to the podcast in the last couple of weeks, it was reported on June 21st that Manowar's performance at the annual event in Clisson was, was called off just hours before the veteran metal group was supposed to take the stage. The Hellfest organizers later issued a statement saying that the Manowar members, quote, decided to leave the site, unquote, and insisting that the cancellation was caused by, quote, reasons beyond our will. Man of War later disputed Hellfest's version of the circumstances that led to the band's non-appearance at the event, claiming that the Hellfest organizers canceled the show after they, quote, chose not to honor their contractual obligations, unquote. So this is just getting stupid. Yeah, it got really stupid because the only reason we know about this lawsuit is that at one of the recent Man of War shows, Joey DeMeo pretty much stopped the show and went on like a 10-minute rant about it to the audience. Just, nom, 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 I mean, whatever. <laughs> Just imagining some dude in the audience, shut the fuck up! Yeah, it's probably some foreign country, so they probably didn't understand what he was saying. <laughs> Have, like, I mean, a good portion of the audience probably didn't understand what he was saying. You know? Okay. What? <laughs> Is this part of the song? <laughs> Play some goddamn music! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, we'll see how that plays out. That'll be fun, I guess. <laughs> Eventually, that's just going to get to put it to old news because yeah. it is old at this point. Yeah, that's going to be old business coming, yeah. up, coming up soon. Real soon. 
All right. Alcoholica. All right. So not necessarily a metal band, but Chevelle are thrilled to be teaming up with acclaimed hometown brewery Revolution Brewing for an exclusive craft beer collaboration. The beer, dubbed La Gargola, La Gargola? La Gargola. is a classic German-style Hedis lager and the band's first brewer collaboration. To celebrate Chevelle and Revolution Brewing, we'll throw a party at Revolution Brew Pub in Chicago at 2323 North Milwaukee Avenue on Thursday, August 1st. The night before the band set at Lollapalooza on Friday. Pours of La Gor- Gorgola will be available and Chevelle will be in attendance. Lollapalooza is still a thing? I think it's a, it's not a touring thing anymore. It's a one-off okay. festival. Gotcha. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it's been sticking around in the Chicago area every year so far. Gotcha. Since that, since that happened. I I'm, I'm, can't quote me on that, I'm, but I'm pretty sure. Okay. Let's go on to merchandising. Merchandising. Okay, NECA Toys will release the Stormtroopers of Death Sergeant D 8-inch cloth or clothed, sorry, action figure in December. The Sergeant D 8 inches available for pre-order uh, for just 32.99 at the NECA website. Not a bad, not a bad price. No, not at all. I, I, I saw a picture of the the thing itself. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. It's well done. It looks awesome. All right, so the iconic art of some of metal's most influential and highly regarded albums will be presented in puzzle form. Yes! For the first time ever. UK's Z Productions will release the first four classic Metallica album covers as 500-piece jigsaws. So, of course, you got Kill 'Em All, Ride the Lightning, Master Puppets, and Justice for All. And they will be released on September 20th. Why not the Black Album? <laughs> I think that's a puzzle that would just piss me off. That would be hysterical. That would just piss me off so much. Just all black. Just all black. Like, fuck. Ah, ah, ah. Be Building amazing. a void here. That would be amazing. That would piss so many people off. Just putting together my existential bore void here. What the fuck? <laughs> all puzzles come in a vinyl box set size box. That will fit alongside vinyl record collections. Pre-orders are available at www.plastichead.com. Back in April, Z Productions launched a new range of rock and metal jigsaw puzzles, Rock Saws. The first uh, collection included jigsaws based on some of the greatest albums in heavy metal history from Iron Maiden, Motorhead, Judas Priest, and Slayer. I need to get some of those because I need some puzzles. Puzzles are cool, and if you can have awesome puzzles... Of awesome metal covers and <laughs> like the, the Black Album. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that because that would just be. I remember um, watching. Um, I remember Salute Your Shorts, and there was an episode where um, they uh, two of the two of the cast members fake sick, and uh, they're they're building a puzzle. They're building and, a puzzle. They do, they do it upside, upside down. down. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking of that the exact same thing when you said the Black Album. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny that you say Salute Your Shorts because I just saw on Facebook that the show premiered today in 1991. Damn. Yes, sir. So happy birthday, Salute Your Shorts. <laughs> <laughs> I love that show. That show is so great. Why don't you go swim in the lake? Because fish fart in it. <laughs> I think my favorite was when they were preparing for a trivia, and Buttnick was trying to teach Sponge about music. Oh yeah, <laughs> and like this is Aerosmith, ah! and this is Metallica. Ah! <laughs> I think I think I had a clip of that at one point. Oh, classic, classic stuff. All right, so let's go on to recording. <laughs> All right, there you're gonna find another theme here in the next couple of sections um, for Ugly Kid Joe. Uh, but first, in recording news, Ugly Kid Joe has set the date for its return to the studio. Speaking to Eon Music this weekend at Ramblin' Man Fair Festival in Maidstone, Kent, singer Whitfield Crane confirmed that he and his bandmates are planning to set aside time at the end of the year to begin the follow uh, to begin on the follow-up to 2015's Uglier Than They Used To Be. Which I, 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 I recall not being crazy thrilled about. I remember liking it, but not, like you said, not being over over the moon about it. Yeah. 
But this is something you might be interested in, Dan. Alice Cooper will release a six-song EP called Breadcrumbs on September 13th via Ear Music. Oh, excuse me. Described as a tribute to the garage rock heroes from his hometown, Detroit City, the EP includes covers of MC5's Sister Anne, Susie Qu- uh, Quattro's Your Mama Won't Like Me, and Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheeler's uh, Devil with a Blue Dress. Joining Cooper on the recording are MC5's Wayne Kramer, jazz singer Paul Randolph, former Grand Funk Railroad member Mark Farner, ex-Detroit Wheels um, drummer Johnny B. Badnedchek, and Mick Collins. Bird Comes will be made available digitally as well as on 20,000 numbered 10-inch vinyl copies. Damn, I have to buy a vinyl. Do you, you, you have a problem with that? Uh, <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, I don't want to do digital, so... Yeah. All right, Fit for an Autopsy will release its fifth studio album, The Sea of Tragic Beast, on October 25th via Nuclear Blast Records. like the album title. Yeah. Atreyu will release a deluxe edition of his latest album, In Our Wake, on August 16th via Spine Farm Records. The new version will feature the original In Our Wake album, along with seven additional tracks... The bonus material includes B-sides from the sessions of both In Our Wake and 2015's Long Live, along with alternate versions of the title track and The Time Is Now from In Our Wake. The deluxe edition features completely redesigned artwork and a total of 19 songs. Right on. Iggy Pop will release his new album Free on September 6th via Loma Vista. It is the first new Iggy Pop LP since 2016's Post-Pop Depression. Speaking of people who will never die... Pretty much. Epica are celebrating the 10th anniversary of their milestone album, Design Your Universe. To mark this special occasion, Epica will re-release this fan-favorite LP as a, quote, gold edition on October 4th through Nuclear Blast. This edition will contain the album remix and remastered by Joost van den Broek with, adi- with updated artwork and a second disc containing newly recorded acoustic versions of Design Your Universe songs. Right on. Okay. I'm- I like how uh, yours is becoming more of a uh, producer. Going, yeah, more getting into more into production and whatnot, and not just playing keyboard. Although yeah. he is a masterful keyboard. Yeah, player. he's a phenomenal keyboard player. He's just, he's not just doing like production and recordings. I mean, he he's pretty much in charge of the production of the live aspect of Arion stuff at this yeah, point, right? He he put together. I, I'm pretty sure he put together uh, the theater equation. That's what I thought. And I, th- I, I have a feeling that he's probably involved in whatever latest live thing that the Arian the Arian Universe. Universe did. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. All right, here's a hashtag copy and paste. Uh, Cradle, of fifth, uh, Cradle of Filth keyboardist and vocalist Lindsay Schoolcraft, an accomplished, an accomplished singer, songwriter, harpist, and pianist in her own right, will release her debut solo album on October 7th. Martyr. Co-written by former Evanescence drummer Rocky Gray, offers 11 tracks of entrancing gothic rock inspired by Schoolcraft's background in classical music. Fans of Evanescence, Nightwish, and the like will appreciate Martyr's lush piano-driven arrangements, while Cradle of Filth enthusiasts will enjoy hearing the darkly romantic side of Schoolcraft's music. That sounds interesting. It does, doesn't it? It's, it's, It's to hear another side of, of an, an artist who is part of a more extreme band. Yeah. Which, you know, you always gotta like. Hell yeah, I, I'd, I'd be down for listening to that. Alright, Stone Temple Pilots frontman Jeff Gutt has confirmed to Rock Talk with Mitch Lafon that the band has completed work on a new album. The disc, which is not expected to arrive before 2020, will be Gutt's second with Stone uh, STP after joining the band two years ago. His recording debut with the group was on its self-titled 7th LP, which arrived in March of 2018. Wow. Prolific. Prolific. I'm sure they've had... I'm sure the the, the Leo brothers have had a lot stored up and I'm waiting, sure. Yeah. And waiting for Scott Weiland, unfortunately. According to a sense-removed listing on the, new, on the Nuclear Blast website, As I Lay Dying will release its new album, Shaped by Fire, on September 20th via the German heavy metal record label. So it was it was there and then gone? Allegedly. Hmm. 
allegedly. I was wondering if they were going to record any more new music and which label would try to pick them up. All right, on October 4th, Insomnium will release their new album, Heart Like a Grave, via Century Media Records. Right on. The Dark Element, the project featuring former Nightwish vocalist Annette Ol- Olsen, Olsen and Finnish guitarist and songwriter Yanni, Yanni Litmat. <laughs> so many, so many vowels in this name. Anyway, they will release their second album, Songs the Night Sings, on November 8th via Frontiers Music. The follow-up to 2017's The Dark Element was mixed by Jacob Hansen, who has previously worked with Volbeat and Amaranth, among others. Right on. Slash, featuring Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators. And the Pips. And... With a Vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> will release Living the Dream Tour on DVD and 2CD, Blu-ray and 2CD, and 3LP Black Vinyl Limited Editions. Uh, there's a digital video, digital audio. It's all coming out September 20th via Eagle Vision. Living the Dream Tour was shot on location on February 20th, uh, 2019 in front of a rabid crowd at London, England's uh, Eventum, Eventum Apollo. It features Slash and company roaring through a highly charged two-hour set of tracks from all four of Slash's solo albums. Right on. Cal Decapitation will release their new album titled Death Atlas on November 29th via Metal Blade Records. The disc was once again recorded at Denver's Flatline Audio with producer Dave Otero. Seven Dust will enter the studio in October to begin recording its new album for an early 2020 release. The follow-up to last year's All I See Is War will once again be tracked at Studio Barbosa in Gotha, Florida with producer Michael Elvis Baschetti, who has previously worked with Alterbridge and Slash, among others. Number one, I had no idea or no recollection that Seven Dust released an album last year. I feel very, 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 very far behind. Yeah, I, I was going to say I need to catch up with them. I knew they released an album, but I need to catch up with them. Yeah, I pretty. Uh, what was the what was the one before that? Kill the Flaw. Kill, yeah, I pretty much lost track of it after that. Yeah. And I don't even think I've listened to that more than once. So I really need to get back on because Seven Dust is one of my favorite bands. So I feel very left out. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you done fucked up. Yeah, I done fucked up. It's my own doing, though. Yeah. X Hoarder will release their first album in 27 years, Mourn the Southern Skies, on September 20th via Nuclear Blast Records. The band now features founding members Vinny LaBella on guitar and Kyle Tom- Thomas on vocals, along with Jason V. Brooks, v. Brooks from Heathen on bass, Marzi Montazeri, who was in, uh, he was formerly of Superjoint Ritual, but he's also in Philip H. and Semo and the Illegals on guitar, and Sasha Horn from Forbidden on drums. KXM, the band featuring bassist vocalist Doug Pennick from King's X, guitarist George Lynch from Lynch Mob and Dokken, and drummer Ray Luzier from Korn, will release its third album, Circle of Dolls, on September 13th via Rat Pack Records in the U.S. and Frontiers Music in Europe. The disc was recorded at Steakhouse Studio in North Hollywood, California, with co-producer engineer Chris Collier, who also helmed the group's first two releases. Right on. Steve Grimmett's Grim Reaper, the revamped version of the cult 80s British metal act Grim Reaper, will release this new album at The Gates on October 11th. According to a press release, the disc will contain 11 tracks of pure British heavy metal. I saw a little bit of <clears throat> Grim Reaper live. They're kind of, they're kind of awesome. So. Uh, they made mention that Steve Grim, we've talked about this a couple of years ago. He was one who had his uh, foot partially amputated or his leg partially amputated yes. after yes. an injury. So it's good to see that he's doing well Yes. and recording. Oh, well, uh, thankfully, nothing's happened to his voice, so he can still do well, it. Well, you, know, you always hear like things like that could be just awful, like get an infection and die. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. But no, no obituary. Yeah, no obituaries. No obituaries. All right, Wednesday 13 will release his new album, Necrophase, on September 27th via Nuclear Blast Records. Necrophase. Necrophase. That's... Sounds like a, I don't know, a bad sci-fi movie. I was going to say a bad sci-fi movie or a weapon in a bad sci-fi movie. 
<laughs> the Necrophaser. <laughs> you ever hear the uh, the outtakes from Thundercats? No. Oh my God, the the out they're amazing. They the yeah. Um, there's one where where one of the characters says, um, "Keep your hands off that that blasted sambal flange," and he suddenly just goes, "What the fuck is a sambal flange?" <laughs> <laughs> You don't wonder like how many times that happens in like these like in these movies and cartoons and stuff like that where people are like what the fuck am I saying? <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> There's another part where um, the little furry beast that follows him around yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is talking and you just have Lionel go shut up you fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Lionel. Oh, that sounds amazing. It sounds it sounds wonderful. Yes. All right, last but not least here for recording news, Denner's Inferno, the new band featuring legendary King Diamond and merciful fake guitar player and composer Michael Denner, has released the title track of its debut EP, Fountain of Grace. The EP will be made available on August 24th on vinyl and CD. The song will also be featured on Denner's, in- Denner's Inferno's debut album, In Amber, which is scheduled for release in November on CD and LP through Mighty Music. Mighty. Mighty. And that wraps up recording news. Well, um, Michael, Michael Denner has been kind of busy because he has, uh, I think he has a side project with um, with Hank Sherman. Yeah, I was going to say, is Denner and Sherman. Denner and Sherman is like a thing, or Sherman yeah, and Denner. Yeah. 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 And I'm, I'm, I'm sure... Th- Everyone's still working on King Diamond's new record that we've been talking about for a while. So, well, he hasn't released something in twelve years. Hopefully, something soon comes. Well, we were supposed to have a new album in like two thousand sixteen, so yeah. he's about three years late. Well, he also had a uh, triple bypass surgery. Or something well, before like that. that, but even so, well before that, even so, that 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 triple bypass surgery is almost a virgin on ten years ago because he had yeah. that right before that Ozfest in Dallas, and I was still living in New York at the time. But <laughs> it's King Diamond. He, 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 he will, I do not want him, King Diamond, bitch. He, he will. He will kill you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He lives in Dallas. Come down the street and get it. <laughs> that's an invitation, there, King. Come on over. Sit in on the podcast. It'd be great. <laughs> it's, it's time for tea. <laughs> <laughs> that's still the best bit we did at, at, at that Whataburger that morning. That that morning. <laughs> After the concert, I, I forgot. I, I I know I used that clip for something. It was, I think it was for the uh, for the um, I saw a show video. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the T. Anyway, the good that men do. The fifth annual Bowl for Ronnie Celebrity Bowling Party benefiting the Ronnie James Dio Stand Up and Shout Cancer Fund will take place on Thursday, November seventh, at Pins Bowling Center in Studio City, California. The event will be hosted by television and radio personality Eddie Trunk, who is heard on Sirius XM's volume channel and whose new TV series, Trunk Fest, airs on Access TV. The Bowl for Ronnie will feature a celebrity bowling to- tournament and a raffle drawing for prizes and memorabilia. Last year's event sold out in advance and raised a record $74,000 for the cancer charity, which is now in its 10th year of raising awareness and much needed funding for cancer research. Right on. Um, I think we, I this is probably now the third time we've reported on on this. I'm sure because we've done this. Um, the one thing I'm thinking of is like, okay, so it's a it's a celebrity thing. I wonder how some celebrities bowl. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like 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 which which ones are the ones that go up there and and do it underhanded and just. Just like between the legs, kind of thing. All right. Well, <laughs> that you mentioned it. I think one of the one of the earlier incarnations of this had Jack Black there, so I'm sure he's the one who does that. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind that he's the one who does that. Um, but also, there's like Geezer Butler. I'm wondering like how he bowls. Or, or, or Tom I can, I can see, I can see him being. being I can see him good. taking it very seriously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like getting really into it. <laughs> just uh, like when he gets the strike, he just goes yes, yes, 
<laughs> like the most <laughs> the most emotion that Keith Butler ever shows. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, last bit of good that men do here. Um, Reverb.com, the online marketplace dedicated to buying and selling new and used musical instruments, announced that it has partnered with former Pantera bassist Brex Brown to sell more than 70 pieces of music gear used live and in the studio throughout his prolific career. The official Rex Brown Reverb shop will launch on Tuesday, July 30th, with a portion of the proceeds going to charity through Reverb Gives, three Reverb Gives, which is Reverb's charitable giving initiative brown joins a number um blah, blah, blah. brown joins a growing number of artists including mastodon's brett hines megadeth's marty freeman and more who've partnered with reverb to get musical instruments and gear from their personal collections into the hands of fans and again the shop will launch on july 30th right on i mean i'm sure he's got a lot of shit so. yeah some of the stuff that he's that i saw amps uh, Fender five string bass, probably the one that he used on like um, you see in videos and live concerts from the uh, vocal display of Power Tours. So that'd be that's pretty badass. Yeah. So we don't have anything. I do have an update on one, our last crowdfunding tracker. Okay. Uh, I believe it was um, his name was. Lachlan Watt, he's a radio personality in Australia. Mm-hmm. He's also performed with a number of different bands. Very much in, involved. Oh, he's a radio host, record label manager, tour promoter, and musician. Uh, he is suff- uh, struggling with brain cancer and going through treatment. So, of course, there is a crowd funder for pretty much helping him out throughout this process. Uh, the goal was $50,000, $50, and so far, twenty-seven thousand nine hundred and sixty three dollars have been raised in the last 25 days and there is an update on him on um on the gofundme page from him personally that he was able to pay nine months rent in advance and buy a new washer and dryer and all this stuff be a responsible adult for the first time in a long time and while he is dealing with the treatment and probably out of work for a little while yeah so it is very much a helpful thing and there are still donations coming up. One was an hour ago. There's 15 hours ago and a day or two ago. So there's still donations coming in. Right on. As it progresses. So our next section is things I want. Shit I want. Shit I want. Shit I want. And um, so you said you didn't have one for this week. I had not been able to think of anything this week. I had one f- I, I was thinking of, um, which... Probably does exist. It just requires a little more research on my part. Um, since we were talking last time about the Northern Kings, yep, and them doing pop songs and whatnot, um, making them metal. The opposite. Oh. The like. opposite would be would be interesting. Like like certain artists like. Tori Amos is, is known for doing this. Yeah, kind of she's stuff. done very good covers of Rain and Blood, Smells Like Teen Spirit. Yeah. Just to name a few. Yeah. Reinterpretations of metal songs. There is one very, very good one. Uh, a band called Boomin. I believe it's Boomin. Uh, I believe they're an Irish band, but they do an incredibly somber um, version of The Rose of Sharon by Killswitch Engage. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. Mm. It's so good because it's acoustic guitar, it's a um, piano and um, violin. Yeah, and it's really good. Yeah. Now, because of because of stuff like YouTube and whatnot, and, and and different artists being as they are, I'm sure a lot of this does already exist. It's just a matter of doing research on my part. But uh, right, 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 right. It's also a matter of it being good. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Um, this isn't necessarily metal, but um, there was a Spanish guitar player who did a cover of Eleanor Rigby by the Beatles. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, and it started off, it didn't even sound like it until the until the actual um, verses hit. Uh-huh. And he was playing it in such a way that he was playing like a backing part and doing the vocal line 
So he was playing both parts on a single guitar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That sounds awesome. Yeah, it was. it's a really, really good version. Um, I've seen a live clip of Ryan Adams... Not Brian Adams, Ryan Adams yeah. doing uh, Holy did, Diver. Didn't he do The Trooper as well? I'm not particularly sure. I, th- I feel like he did The Trooper as well. Um, which was which was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, we, all, we, have, we now have the new version of Head Like a Hole by Miley Cyrus from the Black Mirror episode, which I haven't heard yet. I have not heard this, but I... We talked about it online, on the show. I... Uh, Pretty sure. Okay. <laughs> it's a thing. Huzzah. It's a thing. Huzzah. Um, I, I, I'm sure it's interesting to hear, but um, but more stuff like that, um, and then and even stuff by bigger artists would be more like because obviously like you know. You'd have to do your research if you want to find it on on YouTube and whatnot. But uh-huh. but I I would want to hear something interesting from like like someone like Lady Gaga is a, is a metal fan. Yeah, her covering something that yeah, would be cool. Like her, well she she, she did um, Moth into Flame with with, with Metallica, Metallica at the Grammy. Yeah, that was actually really fucking good. Yeah, so her doing something by herself. You know, just just because that would be kind of cool. Yeah, that would definitely be cool. So you know, bigger name artists. Um, I do remember. I think it was a while ago um, in Madonna's live performances. She closed out the show. Not necessarily. She wasn't singing the song, but she, her whole band would close out the show by playing a Pantera riff <laughs> because her guitarist at the time was a big metalhead. So you know how how bands kind of like do like the big ah, and then all of a sudden they go into like this one random riff to to end the show. Yeah, that's what they did. Yeah, that's cool. I think it was a new level actually. That's cool. But I think that's a, that's the thing that I would like. I would I would like bigger bigger pop artists to cover metal. You would want the same kind of respect that metal is giving pop artists that yeah. pop artists give to metal. Yeah. I think that would be more along the lines of what I would want is the respect part of it. Yeah. Because we all know that metal is a big thing. We all know that a lot of these people listen to it. Mm. Although people don't want to admit it. You know, every time a pop artist wears a Metallica shirt, it's always like, oh my gosh, just for fashion. Well, you don't know if they, they listen to it or not. You don't. You know, it's, you know, just because they make that kind of music doesn't mean they don't like other music. Yeah. So I think just the respect part of it would be would be nice. Yeah. You know, do something a little bit outside your box. Yeah. So that is my should I want. I like it. Okay. So let's move on to concert news. Uh, looks like there's no festivals, so let's go on to touring news. All right, touring news. Static X and Devil Driver are continuing their onslaught of North America this fall with a second leg of the massively successful Wisconsin Death Trip 20th Anniversary Tour, which celebrates the 20th anniversary of Static X's platinum-certified Wisconsin Death Trip album and pays homage to the group's late frontman, Wayne Static. With several sold-out shows from the first leg under their belts, Static X and Devil Driver will once again be joined by Support X, Dope, Wednesday 13, and Raven Black, kicking off the second leg on November 8th in Austin, Texas. The full lineup will tour through December 8th. Then, from December 9th through the 18th, Static X will headline solo shows in the Pacific Northwest with Wednesday 13 as direct support. All right. I wish they were coming around here. Didn't they just come here? Were they here in town? I, I don't think they were here. No? Oh. Maybe close by? Close by. Well, Austin's close by. Uh, I just remember, I, I thought they were close. They, I, whatever. I, 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 whatever. I don't think, if anything, they were playing like the Aztec, which, you know, uh, try to stay away from downtown. <laughs> True. Five Finger Death Punch will embark on a U.S. headlining tour in the fall. The trek will start on November 1st with two special kickoff shows in the band's hometown of Las Vegas on November 1st and 2nd at The Joint at Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. Three Days Grace, Bad Wolves, and From the Gods will join Five Figure Death Punch on the fall tour. Right on. This one I'm excited for. Yes, this one I'm excited for as well. Jeff Tate will perform the Queensryche albums Rage for Order and Empire 
in their entirety on the Empire 30th Anniversary Tour in 2020. And that is coming here. Um, That's not that one. That's not this tour. No? No. The, the, what you're looking at, I think, is the one that Helgram is playing on September 22nd. Yeah. At, I think it's the Aztec. That's, I think that's a different tour. Really? Because this is for 2020. Oh. Oh, that is a different tour. Yeah, totally different. Well, maybe it'll happen on a day where I can actually see it. Because yeah. <laughs> right now it's happening on a Sunday, and I work late on Sundays. Yeah. So, there's that. But that is still cool. Yes, it is super cool. And I would definitely be interested in seeing that, because the last concert I went to was Jeff Tate performing Operation Mindcrime in its entirety, and it was fucking incredible. Yes, it was. So, I'd totally be in doubt on that one. Lacuna Coil and All That Remains have announced the Disease of the Anima, North American head co-headlining tour. The track includes special guests Bad Omens and Tooth Grinder uh, from September 15th through October 10th. Eximius? Eximius? Eximius. Eximius from October 11th uh, to October 19th. And Uncured. I think they're on all dates. Right on. Dream Theater are currently in the middle of a successful European tour. With three weeks left on that run, the band is turning its attention back to North America with the announcement of the second, or the next leg of the acclaimed The Distance Over Time tour, celebrating 20 years of scenes from a memory. The next leg of the tour will kick off at the end of September and run through mid-November. The 27-date trek will see the band making stops in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, Louisville, Kentucky, Cleveland, Ohio, Baltimore, Maryland, Long Island, New York, and San Jose, California, to name a few. There is a San Antonio date on October 22nd at the Majestic. Woot. All right, we are mentioning High on Fire, so they better be announcing a drummer very soon because they announced a juggernaut North American tour with Power Trip. Dates kick off on November 7th at Levitation Festival, the three-day music festival held in Austin, Texas, now in its sixth year and continue through the end of the year. The trek will stretch from coast to coast, hitting major markets in North America and Canada before wrapping up in Southern California in early December. Support on the tour will come from Devil Master and Creeping Death. Right on. In support of their forthcoming Napalm Records debut, The Things We Can't Stop, the band that I never thought would come back cold, because I thought, why, will hit the road late this summer and into early fall, and into early fall. (sighs) Dubbed the Broken Human Tour, the band's first trek in over eight years kicks off August 29th in Teaneck, 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 yeah, Yeah, New Jersey, (laughs) Tanakh. Tenacious D tonight. Yeah, I, I, I got it. I got, I got, I got, I got the joke. <laughs> and runs through October 20th in Lexington, Lexington, Kentucky. There's a San Antonio date, September 28th at the Rock Box. Bad Religion will embark on a U.S. headlining tour in September. The trek kicks off on September 17th in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and wrap up on October 8th and 9th with a two-night stand in Santa Ana, California. Right on. As I Lay Dying will embark on the Shaped by Fire U- U.S. headlining tour in the fall. Support on the track will come from After the Burial and Emure. That kind of coincides with the uh, the release of the album. Release of the uh, the alleged release of the album. Alleged release of the album. <laughs> uh, Steel Panther will embark on the Heavy Metal Rules tour in the fall. No dates here. No dates. This September, Ugly Kid Joe singer Whitfield, Whitfield Crane will embark on his first ever solo tour. This unique show, dubbed Playing All the Songs, will allow Whit to play tracks from his extensive back catalog for the very first time, including songs from Another Animal, Medication, Life of Agony, Yellow Cake, Richard's Crane, and of course, Ugly Kid Joe. That sounds like what... Uh... Devin Townsend would be doing. Yeah, or or what uh what I just saw with John Karabi. Yes. Yeah. He you know, he had plenty of bands to pick from, so All right, Steve Grimmitz, Grim Reaper will embark on a US tour in August. There will also be a special one off UK album launch show on October twelfth at London's Boston Music Rooms. Right on. And that is it for touring. So what about one offs? All right, one off here. Ace Fraley will perform with Kings of Chaos on Friday, July 26th at the 2019 
Washington County Fair in West Bend, Wisconsin. The supergroups lineup will also include Sebastian Bach, Gilby Clark of Guns N' Roses, Warren Martini of Rat, James Lomenzo of White Lion and Megadeth, and Matt Sorum of Velvet Revolver and Guns N' Roses. Originally formed by Sorum in 2012 as Rock and Roll All-Stars, Kings of Chaos features a core lineup of members as well as a rotating cast of guest musicians. This sounds very similar to a Metal Alliance, but more of on a hard rock side. Yeah. Sounds like a Frontiers Records kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but dad rock. All right, ready? Hashtag copy and paste. Ugly Kid Joe frontman, Whitfield Crane. And a 35-piece Philharmonic Australia Orchestra will celebrate Ozzy Osbourne's 71st birthday by paying homage to Black Sabbath and other rock classics this December. A little backstory here. After a European tour, Crane made himself at home in Verona, Italy, which is the birthplace of classical music and opera. And during that time, the vocalist made his dream of marrying these two genres a reality. The end result was a sold-out performance with Wit fronting the Machiavelli Orchestra performing a show comprising of Sabbath classics, choice cuts from Osborne's solo career, and the prime movers from Witt's own 30-year catalog. The music was all scored by fast-rising Italian composer Andrea Bastoni, whose performance credits have led him to be one of the world's most sought-after young conductors in modern classical music, which sounds like an oxymoron to me. Now, with the assistance of good friend and co-producer Australian tennis legend Pat Cash, Orchestra of Doom arrives in Australia and will see Wit perform with the Philharmonic Australia Orchestra. Uh, they will be performing at Australia's Melbourne Palace Theatre on December 3rd and Sydney Darling Harbour Theatre on December 7th. Right on. I saw a clip of uh, their version of War Pigs. Uh, no, 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 not War Pigs. Iron Man. Yeah. It was pretty interesting because they still have a regular drummer to kind of keep the beat, but all the instrumentation is class is you know orchestra. Cool. So it it sounded pretty fun. Cool. Misfits, the Misfits, will play their only 2019 East Coast show on October 19th at Madison Square Garden in New York City. Support of the concert will come from special guests Rancid and the Damned. That sounds like a show, right? Park, punk rockers dream yeah. at Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Hollywood Vampires will be the musical guest on the July 30th episode of The Late Late Show with James Corden. Ah, uh, uh, I need to catch up with the Hollywood Vampires. I want to hear it. Like, I heard one song from the new the new record. Yeah. And I actually kind of dug it. Yeah. You know, obviously, Alice Cooper's the front man. Yeah. But um, Johnny Depp does some vocals on it. It wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. Like, I expected it to be horrible. So, and the music is, you know, it's a, pretty much you just do a, um, a combination of what Alice Cooper has been doing for the last couple of years and, and Aerosmith because it's Joe Perry on guitar. So, yeah. you know, good driving hard rock stuff. Yeah. So, but that will be it for one-offs and concert news as a whole. So let's go into heavy metal in the charts. Well, let's get through a noteworthy point here first. God Smack has achieved a career first by scoring three number one singles from the same album, which I thought would... They would have done that with their self-title, but I could, I could be wrong. This week, Under the Scars, the third single from the band's When Legends Rise LP, has ascended to number one on the active rock chart. This marks the group's third number one rock hit from its current album, Under Your Scars. Uh, no, 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 current album, period. Under Your Scars follows the band the album's two previous tracks with number one active rock hits, When Legends Rise and Bulletproof the latter of which was recently certified gold in the U.S. and has also the most played song at Rock Radio in 2018. I've never heard it. Like, I don't, like, when they say, like, these numbers were on singles on Rock Radio, I'm like, what rock radio stations are playing these fucking songs? Because yeah. the one that we have here is still playing the same set list from 1993. Yeah. So I want to know what stations these people are listening to. That plays new music. Same here. But are you ready to be disappointed? Oh, uh, well, I'm always ready. All right, we got the uh, Billboard Top 200. Yep. Number one is a new record by Ed Sheeran. It's called Number Six Collaborations Project. 
I'm pretty sure this is him doing a bunch of duets because there's a very annoying single out right now with him and Justin Bieber. The reason I know this is because I listen to Top 40 while I'm driving for Uber. Yep. You... I suffer. Oh, poor suffer. I suffer. Suffering soul. Billie Eilish, When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go, is number two. Various artists, uh, Dreamville and J. Cole, Revenge of the Dreamers. I have no idea what that is. I don't know what that is. I don't know. I, they say various artists. It's probably those two people, Dreamville, which is probably a stage name, and J. Cole, mm-hmm. and this is their album together. Okay. So, whatever. Whatever. Lil Lil Nas X. What the fuck? Exactly. Anyway, he has an EP out called Seven. That's at number four. Okay. And for some reason, this son of a bitch is still at very high on the charts. Chris Brown's new album, Indigo, is at number five. Ah, fuck off. Why is he still so fucking popular? He's such a shithead. Because people love shitheads. Apparently so. All right, here we go with our disappointment. Well, actually, at number 17 is Queen, Bohemian Rhapsody soundtrack. Okay. At number 18 is a new album by 311 called Voyager. What? What? They're still around? Allegedly so. All right, we got Elton John's Diamonds, his collection, his best love collection here, is at number 24, which is down from 19 last week, but that's still in the top 25. Rounding out the top 25 is Greatest Hits 1, 2, 3, the Platinum Collection by Queen. Scrolling down further. Oh, number 31 is not that much of a surprise, although I would have expected it to be a little bit higher, is the soundtrack from the new Lion King movie. Yeah. The Lion King cannot beat out the Queen. Didn't you see that movie? No. Mom took the boys to see that. Oh. I, 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 I saw the original one. I'm good. I'll stick with my 90s cartoon. Thank you very much. <laughs> I saw my father die once. That's enough. <laughs> right? I was traumatized. Mufasa dying was our generation's Bambi's mom. There's no Jeremy Irons. You ain't got me. Yeah, and Be Prepared is not in it. Oh, then... Uh, yeah. Uh, no. Nope. Yeah, exactly. No. Nope. Yeah. I'm done. Yep, totally. I'm out. That is the best Disney song ever. So no, I actually uh, there is one that that it matches it, um, Hellfire. If you've ever seen uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame, I have. Oh, yeah. yeah, the one by the the priest, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah, yeah. Okay, that matches it. Yeah, well, that was a dark movie as a whole. Yeah. So yeah, sweet, but be prepared though. Yeah. Uh, number 55 is the greatest hits by Creedence Clearwater Revival. Your dog's namesake, Abbey Road, is at number 60. Abbey Road. Abbey Road. <laughs> Mothership, the Zeppelin, number 76 on the charts, up from 153 last week. Wow. Double this position, pretty much. <laughs> Greatest Hits by uh, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers is a re-entry at number 81. Number 81. Wow. Guns N' Roses' Greatest Hits is at number 92. Fleetwood Mac Rumors is at 96. ACDC Back in Black is at number 98. The Beach Boys, Summer of so- uh, Sounds of Summer, the very best of the Beach Boys, is at 101. That's different. Not surprising. Sounds of the summer makes sense, kind of. Okay. Grace hits by the Eagles is at one fifteen. Sublime self titles at one seventeen. Essential Michael Jackson is at one nineteen. All time greatest hits by Leonard Skinner is at one twenty. Reentry at one thirty one is the greatest hits by Red Hot Chili Peppers. Wow. Uh-huh. Yep. A little bit of a resurgence there. So this isn't as terrible as I thought it would be. No, because no, we're still... The Beatles, the White Album out of nowhere. 152. 
I was at 151 last week. Speaking of great puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> the white owl and the black owl. Gotta have them. <laughs> All right. The uh, Stranger Things soundtrack is at 154. Wow. A Decade of Destruction, Five Finger Death Punch is at 155. Never mind. Is at 164. Greatest Hits by Bon Jovi is at 165. Greatest Hits by Motley Crue is a re-entry at 169. Really? Yes, sir. Not even the Dirt soundtrack. Not even the Dirt soundtrack. The very best of Hall and Oates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very best. Honk. By the guns, uh, about the guns and roses. The rolling fucking stones, dipshit, is at 191. Yeah, don't. Yeah, I know. Stop it. Leave me alone. <laughs> and greatest hits by Blink 182. Get the fuck out of here. Number 200. Get the fuck out of here. Number 200. All right. Ready for the top 25 hard I'm, rock albums? I am ready. Number 25, Caesar. Caesar. What? Greatest Hits. I guess they would consider this because it's a collection of songs from 2002 to 2013. Uh-huh. Number 24 is a re-entry, Toxicity, System of a Down. 23 is 1X, Three Days Grace. 22, the very best of Nickel Back. 21, Rage Against Machines, self-titled. 20 is Meteora by Linkin Park. 19 is All the Right Reasons, Nickel Back. Number 18, Pearl Jam, 10. Number 17, Hardwired 2, Self-Destruct by Metallica. Number 16 is Experience Hendrix, the best Jimi Hendrix by Jimi Hendrix. Number 15 is Greatest Hits Queen. Number 14 is Greatest Hits Three Doors Down. Number 13, Greatest Hits Fruit Fires. Number 12, Greatest Hits Def Leppard. Number 11 is The Black Album by Metallica. Number 10 is Hyper Theory, Linkin Park. Number 9 is Aerosmith's Greatest Hits. Number eight is the re-entry of Motley Crue's Greatest Hits. Number seven, Greatest Hits, Bon Jovi. Six, Greatest Hits, Five Freaking Death Punch. Five, Back in Black. Number four is Greatest Hits by Guns N' Roses. Number three is Mothership Led Zeppelin. Number two, Greatest Hits, one, two, three, The Platinum Collection, Queen. And, of course, number one, Bohemian Rhapsody, the fucking soundtrack. So little has changed, although see there appears out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Okay. So we actually have a discussion point. I I, I picked a loud wire list. Oh shit! Look yeah. at you. Um, You're doing all the work today. And it kind of goes with summer. Um, it's the ten essential rock and metal barbecue albums. Barbecue albums. Albums. Love so, it. Let's so, do this. So it's it's supposed to be for summer barbecue, but this is Texas. You barbecue anytime you fucking want. Because it's never not summer here. Yeah, and the first one, automatically, I agree with, um, ACDC Back in Black. Woot woot! Um, because if you put on any classic rock station, you're going to get the entire album regardless. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, so no matter what, you're, you're yeah. Um, but, you know, Hell's Bells, Have a Drink on Me, um, Rock and Roll and Noise Pollution, these are, you know... Shook me all night long. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah, I mean, they're, they're standards at this yeah, point. Yeah. Uh, next album is Bad Religion, The Empire Strikes First. I'm not familiar with Bad Religion. I'm not very familiar with that at all, but punk music in general is really good for barbecues because I always I, – they're, I just the upbeat tempo. It's yeah. just a lot of fun. Yeah. So I can definitely see that being a thing. Mm. Uh, next one um, – little strange uh Def Leppard Pyromania I, can... I mean I love the album yeah I, I, I love the album but I I can only picture certain songs being um suitable for a, a barbecue yeah yeah you know? um like even even like the bigger hits like Foolin' like I, I wouldn't Hear yeah, that that's the, 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 yeah. yeah. Photograph, photograph maybe. Yeah. Rock of Ages for sure. Rock of Ages definitely. Yeah, um, but um, 
I'm just glad they picked they picked Pyromania. What is it? It's Pyromania. Pyromania. Instead of Hysteria. Yeah. I'm glad they picked that one. Yeah. Because um, if they just picked that one, for, pour some sugar on me. No. Next one is a, another obvious one, and one I obviously agree, agree with. It's Guns N' Roses' Appetite for Destruction. Absolutely. Put a, put on classic rock station, even modern rock station, and you're going to get the entire album. Yep. Um, so, absolutely. Um, Jimi Hendrix, are you experienced? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm not as familiar with Jimi Hendrix. Um, I just... He's just, again, another kind of standard. I'm not familiar with the album itself because I, I mostly listen to, like, I have his best stuff and, I, and then I have his box sets. Yeah. Which is not necessarily album stuff. Yeah. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what's on that album. So I'm going to assume it's probably the hit. So you're probably talking like Foxy Lady, you're talking about Voodoo Child, um, you know, maybe Wings of, uh, the Wind Cries Mary. I'm really not like, sure, but it sounds a little bit of perfect. Yeah. Um, well, this is a, this is a interesting one. Kiss Alive. Shit. Kiss in general. Yeah. Like, would not have thrown on the list at all. Yeah, I wouldn't have expected that one my, myself. Um, but again, a lot of this list is focusing on classic rock. Very much classic rock. I mean, the thing is like, you know, you, you don't necessarily associate metal with a happy event like a, like a barbecue. Yeah. Like you would probably think more along the lines like you want to try to avoid fighting at a barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> so then, then don't play anything like flogging Molly or. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Like I need to get into the show Piggy Blinders. Yeah. Because I've seen so many clips of it recently, uh-huh. and it just sound it looks amazing. Um, it just but there's a scene where uh, the, the 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 boss is getting married. And he's he's got all his boys round up around him, and he's like, "Listen, I'm getting married, all right. So, no fighting, no fucking fighting, no cocaine, no sport, no f- telling fortunes, and <laughs> because it's it's set in like post World War One, so it's like no sucking petrol out of their fucking gas tanks. If you do anything to embarrass my family, <laughs> like it's <laughs> fucking hilarious." Totally not meant to be, but it totally is, and I definitely need to watch this fucking show. <laughs> now, uh, getting back to Kiss Alive. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, there are, I mean, it's it's after it's three albums in. It's two? the it's the first one, right? So it's a live yeah, one. Yeah, it's a live one. Uh, it's it's I think it's about three albums into their career. Uh, so it's it's their their hard rock classics before they went like more pop. Rock. I was gonna say, is it is it does it like feature Detroit Rock City, rock and roll all night, things of that nature? I think so. Because uh, actually, sure. I think like the definitive version of rock and roll all night. No, because remember? Destroyer came out in seventy six. This is seventy five. Oh, okay. So. I really I I'm not familiar with their catalog whatsoever. As far as chrono- this chronology. Is, this is like Deuce and Strutter and Cold Gin. And this is like... Oh, the, okay. Yeah. Then I can actually see that. I can yeah. actually see that a lot. Yeah. Especially Cold Gin. I mean, yeah. That's a great song. Okay. Queens of the Stone Age. Read it R. Not familiar with the record yeah. at all. Not, not I would I would love, personally, if it was my choice, Songs for the Deaf. Because I think that's a great record. Yeah. That's the one that made them big. It has their, their huge hit on it. But the whole record's really good. So, yeah. Uh, the Ramones, Ramones. Anything punk rock we talked about, yeah. especially especially Ramones because they're definitely more of the upbeat on the happy side of things. Yeah. So yeah. Um, this one I wouldn't really go for um, necessarily. Um, Skid Row, Skid Row. I'm not familiar with the record at all. Well, it's Youth Gone Eight, Wild. Youth Gone Wild, 18 and, and life. life. And I Remember You. Oh, okay, um, okay. Yeah, it, it, I, I don't really... That's like the one like closer to metal side on this list so far. Yeah, but it, I mean, I, I don't really see it as, as being essential for... for yeah, I'm not, not, I'm not picking that one. Yeah. and Oh, this one, obvious. Uh, Van Halen, Van Halen. Oh, just party rock in general. Yeah, absolutely. Fuck like, yeah. Van, like Van Halen, David Lee Roth fronted Van Halen is, is it, for the most part, party rock. I mean, you might. I mean, if you don't, if you don't, if you go past the fucking frat house and it's not playing, they're they're missing out. Yeah. 
So it's that, just that whole mentality. That is their ten. Um, for the most part. <laughs> no, yeah. Finish this up, and then I, I, I'm going to tell you a for story. For the most part, I, I would agree with it, but it, it it does lean heavily toward toward classic rock. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. It's it's more stuff that's more approachable by everybody involved, because you know not everyone in a bar is going to share the same musical taste. But Has everyone's, that crossover but everyone's, appeal. Everyone's going to know like the the big songs. Yeah, for real. So, um, yeah. So while I was in New York, I jumped on the Painted Black podcast with our friends mm-hmm. uh, Brian Katz and Pete Berg, mm-hmm. and Dave Namer happened to be there too. We all we have a kind of a tradition where uh, the summer I go out to see them, we do the podcast and we go see a Spider Man movie. This is the second year that we've done that. The first one is when um, Spider Man Homecoming came out two years ago, so we are now repeating ourselves. So when the next Spider Man movie comes out, I guess I have to go see them and do a podcast. Anyway, the main reason I'm talking about this is because Dave Namer recently became a fan of Iron Maiden. Okay. Like just recently. And the way he became a fan is because I introduced him to Ice Earth years ago. Yeah. And he was listening to their cover of so, Hollow Be Thy Name. Oh. And he was like, oh, my God, this is a really great song. And he, you know, discovered that it was an Iron Maiden cover. And he went and listened to Number of the Beast for the first time ever, about 35 years too late. And he's he's now, like, fully, like, balls deep into getting to know Iron Maiden. Mm-hmm. And I just find it really funny. <laughs> I just find it really, really funny. Well, as, as long as people are getting into it. So. I, that's what I said. I said, better late than never. Yeah. And I, I had to make sure that, you know, he posted something on, on his Facebook page. Like, did you guys know that Iron Man is like the best band ever? And everyone was like, yeah, duh, dipshit. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had, to, I had to, he was wondering, like, what else to listen to. Somebody mentioned Blaze Bailey. He's like, who's Blaze Bailey? So I, I made sure to to copy and paste our YouTube, our, our 10-word reviews of Iron Man into his Facebook comment section. So I, hopefully someone, I, hopefully he listened to it or watched it and yeah. gets an idea of what to listen to. Yeah, but I, like I said, I, I the only reason I bring it up is because I just find it really, really funny. But like you said, better late than never. It fucking a, fucking a. Now he just has to see him live, and then it's over. Yeah, while while they're still going. Oh, speaking of that, did you see the fucking set list? Yeah, that That's... set list is badass. Yeah, it's 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 almost <coughs> it's almost one from every album. It's crazy. Almost one from every album. I can't fucking wait. They're playing the Klansmen again. They're playing the Klansmen. And that was like, that was on the set list the first time we they're saw them. They're playing Sign of the Cross. I mean, there is just so much great shit on that set list. Yeah. I can't fucking wait. Um, <clears throat> they're playing Where Eagles Dare again. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I'm a little surprised that they're putting Where Eagles Dare between Aces High and Two Minutes to Midnight. Um, just because... You you'd think one flows seamlessly uh, seamlessly into the other, um, but I'm gonna try and pull this up right quick. Yeah. Maybe just they they put Run to the Hills back into the set list. They put Halloween that name back into the set list after that lawsuit was taken care of. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so it, it's it's if you're seeing them on the Legacy of the Beast tour, it's a it's a pretty. Well-rounded set. I was going to say, it's pretty much almost kind of very reminiscent of the Gimme Ed Till I'm Dead tour, where they played a lot of the classic stuff. That was our yeah. first tour. Yeah. Well, now that now they've got... Um, so many albums after that. Son of a bitch. One of the things that... I can't cancel. It's not coming up. There you go. Go away. Um... One of the things I thought was interesting was they picked um, For the Greater Good of God. Yeah. That was my favorite track from A Matter of Life and Death. Yeah. They, but they didn't – I don't know if they picked anything from Dance of Death. And huh. I wish they would have picked something else from, from Brave New World aside from The Wicker Man. True. Yeah. I wish they would have played, like, Rainmaker. Like, that would have been a great – Great three and a half minutes. You pulling out the set list? I'm trying to. My yeah. phone is just being really slow. Gotcha. Well, 
I should just pull up on the laptop. It's right over there. Uh, don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, it's it's oh, a fuck yeah. All right, so in order here, craziness starts off with Aces High, mm-hmm. where Eagles Dare. Two minutes to midnight earlier in the set because usually that's later in the set. Two minutes to midnight usually starts off. Yeah. Yeah, it's usually it's usually aces high into. I'm thinking of Fear of the Dark. I'm sorry because that is later in the set too. Yeah. All right, number four is um, Klansman, yeah. which I can't wait for. One of my favorite tracks. Number five, of course, is the Trooper. One of my favorite tracks of all time. Revelations. I I'm not so keen on on that one being in there. I, I like the song, um, but I wish they had replaced it with something else. I always loved Heaven Can Wait. Uh, a wasted years is one of my favorite live tracks ever. Yes, absolutely. like ever, absolutely. Uh, for the greater good of God, as we mentioned, the Wicker Man, Sign of the Cross, Sound Flight, of... Flight of Icarus. That I'm excited for. Yep, because I don't think we've seen that one live. I'm not. You might be right on that. I'm not particularly sure. Uh, but then we get into the standards here: Fear of the Dark, Number of the Beast, and Iron Maiden. And then their encore is the Evil That Men Do. Yeah. Hollow Be Thy Name, and Run to the Hills. I'm surprised they didn't put Wrathchild in there. Yeah, I mean, no, that's usually a pretty, that's pretty standard as well. Yeah. So they, they, they has, there's nothing from Killers in there. Um, uh, there's nothing from No Prayer for the Dying. Nothing from um, Somewhere in Time. Oh, wait. No, no, there's nothing from Somewhere in Time. Which sucks because, you know, there's plenty of gold on that album. Yeah. Um, I think you're right. There's nothing from Dance of Death. Nothing from Dance of Death. Um, nothing from The Final Frontier or Book of Souls. Yeah. Well, they just tore on Book of Souls, yeah. last tour. So this, yeah, is, so this is that time. Yeah. But it would have been nice if they would have thrown in Wrathchild. Yeah, they threw, it's, it's a 16 song set list that covers all the bases with tracks from 10 different records. Including Peace of Mind, Brave New World, A Matter of Life and Death, and even Virtual Eleven, which is, of course, The Klansman. Yeah. But even so, it's a great set list. Yeah. So. It's probably one of the better set lists in a while. Yeah. So, looking forward to that in September. Yep. It's going to be it's gonna be fun to see the show and then have to go sleep in your car. <laughs> Yeah, and it turns out that I'm going to have the kids that week, so I'm going to have to... I'll be, I'll be on vacation, so I can go home, go to... Well, come here anyway, go to sleep, and then take the kids to school in the morning yeah. <laughs> and do the dad thing. Yeah. So, um, I think we're going to call it there because Warrior needs sleep badly. Yeah, among other things. Elf needs sleep badly because Elf just got home two hours ago from work. Yeah, I want two hours of sleep myself. So, so um, until next time, I'm Dan Mack, and this is Chris Mack, and we are the Slime.